Hey everyone, Kevin here from River City Graphics. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to use variables and conditional statements in jQuery. So, let's get started. Alright, so here in Dreamweaver we have our files that we've been using in the past few videos. Now if you haven't seen those videos, I recommend that you go and check those out because we've showed how to actually link to the jQuery library, how to set up a link to an external jQuery file, and then how to actually start manipulating some HTML by using jQuery. So I'm going to get started by going over to my script.js file and I'm going to comment out the code that we created in the last video. So before I've used these double forward slashes in order to comment one single line, but you can also create a block comment by putting a forward slash and then an asterisk, and then at the very end of what you want to comment out, put an asterisk and then a forward slash as well. So that can create a block comment so that you can comment out more than one line at a time. So what we're going to be learning today is how to actually use variables and conditional statements. So to get started, we're going to talk about variables, which are basically containers for information. So variables can store numbers, they can store sentences or words, basically whatever you want them to actually store. So in order to create a variable, you're just going to say var and then space, and then you need to create a name for the variable. So I'm just going to call mine, say, my var. Okay, and then it doesn't really matter what the syntax is on this. this. I usually make my first word lowercase, and then the second word I usually capitalize. So then after that, you're going to put space equals space, and then you can take and put basically whatever you want this to equal. That's what you're going to put here. So if you want it to be a number, you can just type a number and then a semicolon. And if you want it to be a word, you need to put it into quotes and then put a semicolon. So we're going to make mine a word, so we're just going to put it in quotes. So I'm just going to say hello exclamation point is what my variable is actually going to be equal to. So this my var is now equal to hello. So anywhere I use my var, it's going to also mean basically hello. So in order to illustrate that point, we're going to take and alert this out. So I'm going to say alert, open close parentheses, semicolon. Now, if you remember before we were using alerts, we would always have whatever we were alerting inside of quotes. Now, that's because we were basically always alerting out words. Now, if you're alerting out a variable, you don't need to have it in quotes. So I'm just going to copy my var, and I'm going to paste it right here into the alert. So since my var is equal to hello when we alert this, it should say hello when we do that. So I'm just going to go over and preview this in Chrome. And you can see now we get an alert of hello. So all seems to be working according to plan. So we're just going to go back over here and we're going to take a little bit more of a look at variables. So I'm going to delete this out and we're going to create two new variables. I'm just going to call one of them number one, space equals space one. And then we're going to make another one called number two, space equals space two, and then a semicolon. So now we have two variables. One of them is equal to one, and then one of them is equal to two, and their names basically correspond with what they're equal to. So you can actually take variables and also use them in addition and math. So you can say alert, open close parentheses, semicolon, and then inside of this alert, we're going to say number one, space plus, and then space number two. So now what we're basically doing is saying, number one, which is equal to one, plus number two, which is equal to two, is going to be what we're alerting out. So we should see three actually being alerted. So if we go over to our Chrome and refresh it, you can see that we are now getting an alert of three. So if we take and go back in here, we can get a little bit fancier. If we wanted to make one more variable, we can actually make, say, a total. So we'll say var total, space equals space, and then we can make the math function go in that. So we can basically make a more compacted code by doing this. So we're going to say the total is now going to go inside of the alert. So we've basically taken and put all of our math and all of our kind of complicated stuff up here so that now our final line of what we're actually doing is a little bit more uh, nice to actually look at. So I'm going to go back over here and we're going to refresh it and see basically the same thing happens, just a little bit nicer in the code. So now what we can actually do is take a look at some conditional statements. So I'm going to take and we'll just delete out all of our variables and we'll just leave one and we're going to rename this to my number. Okay. So what conditional statements basically do are allow you to create a check to see if something has happened and if it's happened then you're going to do something. So if your number is equal to one then say hello. If your number is equal to two then say awesome. If your number is equal to three then say great. So it, it allows you to create a check on a specific thing happening, and then if that thing has happened, then it will do something. So 
might seem a little bit confusing, but once you see it in action, it should make a little bit more sense. So the way that you create a conditional statement is to say if, and then open close parentheses, open curly bracket, hit enter twice, and then a close curly bracket. So this is the general way that this looks. So inside of these parentheses is going to be your condition. So what you're actually checking to see if it's happened. And then inside of these curly brackets, which would be line 11 currently, is going to be what actually happens if this is, if this is correct. So what we're actually going to be checking for is say my number is equal to one. And so we're also going to need two equal signs because we want to check to see if my number is like exactly equal to one. So sometimes you use one equal sign and sometimes you use two. We'll probably be getting into why that happens a little bit later, but usually in if statements you use two equal signs to check if something is equal to something else. So once you've done that, what you're going to do is take and put some arguments into your if statement. So now we're saying if my number is equal to one, then we'll say We'll just alert something out. We'll say alert, open close parentheses, semicolon, and then inside of here, two quotes. And inside of that, we'll say your number is one. Okay? So now we can take and go back over here and we'll check this. It says your number is one. Now this is only running because our number is actually equal to one. So if we actually took and made my number equal to two, then that would make this if statement wrong. So it would say my number is equal to one, which it's not, then alert this. So we shouldn't see anything happen now because our number is not equal to one. So if we take and refresh this, you see that nothing happens. So now we can create something for the two if we want. So we can say else if, which is another type of condition. So we'll say else if, then open parenthesis, close parenthesis, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And so now we'll say my number equals two. So I'm just gonna copy that and we'll change this number right here. So then we want it to say, alert out, your number is two, okay? So let's take a look again at what is happening. We're going to have our number say equal to one. We'll change that right there. So if our number is equal to one, it's going to alert your number is equal to, or your number is one. So otherwise, it's going to say, well, this wasn't right. Let's go on and check and see if this next one is right. So we're going to say else if, which is basically like saying go to the next one and check and see if this is right. So it's going to say, is your number equal to 2? If it's equal to 2, then you're going to alert your number is 2. Okay? So we'll take and save this. And so it should say this one because our number is currently equal to 1. So we're going to go over to Chrome, refresh this. Your number is 1. Okay, so now we make our number two and refresh this, your number is two. Okay, so everything is working out accordingly. So you'll notice that it only ever fires one of these because it's basically saying if, if it's not equal to one, then it's going to go on and it's going to use this one. And so it, does, it never gets to this alert. So now there's one more type of condition that you can use and that's called else. So we're going to say else, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. Now you'll notice that this one doesn't actually have the parentheses in there. This if statement has parentheses, this if else statement has parentheses, because you're actually checking for something very specific. You're saying if the number is equal to one, then do something. This else is kind of a catch-all. It's basically if you haven't had any specific thing happen, everything else, apply this to it. So. If your number is equal to three, it goes into here. If your number is four, it goes into here because it's not equal to two or one. So these if and these else if are very specific. And if it's not specific, then it goes into the else. So in order to give you an example of that, we'll say put an alert in here. Alert, open close parentheses, semicolon. And then inside there we'll put two quotes and then we'll say your number is something else because your number doesn't fit into the category of two or one. So if we make our number three, for instance, it does not fit this if statement, this else if statement, and so it'll fall into the catch-all of this else, okay? So if we take and refresh that, you should see your number is something else. So now we have a pretty cool little system going. So if we change this to one, it's going to take and say your number is one. And so it's getting really smart at figuring out what is actually happening here, which is pretty cool. So you can use that to your advantage when actually writing applications later on. So now 
you can make it say whatever you want for any of those. So now there are more systematic ways later on that you can make it say, um, determine what the number actually is because right now you would have to have one of these for every number. So there's um, better ways to do that, but just to kind of get the principles across of the conditional statements, this seems to work out pretty well. So basically that's it for this tutorial. What we've learned today is variables hold information and how to actually use those. Then we've also learned about conditional statements, which would be the if, the else if, and the else. So hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment. I do have new videos coming out every week. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.